Hi, my name is Tyler Moore, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this website step-by-step -step with no step skipped. And as you can see, it is beautiful. I took inspiration from Apple, Airbnb, and Uber. Not this crap, what is this? Let's not make a website like this. This is not what we want, and I'll tell you why. It's because it looks awful. First of all, there are so many different colors on here. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Second of all, Look at this navigation. Beautiful, simple logo up here. Beautiful, simple logo up here. Beautiful, simple logo up here. Beautiful, simple logo up here, right in the navigation. This, I don't even know what this is. This makes me just like, don't ever install a theme like this. This is terrible. I wanna help you make something great like this, not terrible like this. So if you're ready, then I'm ready. Let's take a little website tour. I'm gonna to show you how to put in this headline, subheadline, and call to action buttons. And if it looks familiar, that's because it is. We can see where to focus and the call to action, where to focus, call to action, where to focus, and the call to action, and this, no. The next thing that I'm gonna show you is to how to insert full-size images. There's a reason why multi-million dollar websites like Apple and Uber and Airbnb put in full-size images, and that's because it works. They've tested this. The next thing that I'm gonna show you how to do is put in your logo and your navigation, and that's because it doesn't waste any space right here. If we're wasting a whole bunch of space, then people have to scroll down and that's not good because you're gonna lose people. People have ADD, they're just gonna click off your website. So we don't wanna waste a lot of space. You can see Apple wastes hardly any, bit, any space. Uber doesn't waste any space. Airbnb doesn't waste any space. But this one wastes a ton of space. You don't wanna pick a theme that wastes a whole bunch of space up here because people have to scroll down in order to get into your content. You don't want that. This website is gorgeous. It has subheadlines, these three featured boxes, all of these buttons, and you can make any type of website you want on this. I'm just gonna show you how to make this specific one step-by-step. -step. We're gonna be putting in social media right here, and we can change any of these colors. I'm gonna show you how to make this logo. Let's go to an about page, and we can see about us, that's me. And obviously you can put you in there and these three pictures and I'm going to show you how to do all of this. Let's see the R work. We click up here for it. And this just showcases your work. If you have work, you can say uh, talk about it and put a picture, talk about it, put a picture, talk about it and put a picture. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous website. I'm going to show you how to get all of these images for free. And we can go ahead and click on the services page. And this is where you can talk about your different services. And it looks really great. We have the call to action right here below at the bottom. And we can finally go to the contact page. This is where uh, they can see where you are and your contact information. And you can just fill out this form. They can fill out the form and press send and it'll send right into your email. One of the coolest things about this website is the video. We can press watch the video. It pops right up, press play. Beautiful, this could be all about your business. A little commercial for it, which is really cool. But that's not it. This website is 100% responsive, so it works on all iPhones, tablets, PCs, Macs, it works on everything. Even if we resize it right now, we can see that it'll change to be responsive. So that's really, really awesome. So I'm going to show you how to make this website step-by-step -step with no steps skipped. So if you're ready, then I'm ready. So let's begin. You can create your website in four steps. Step one is to get hosting. Hosting is a computer that's on 24 hours a day that hosts all of your information, like your text and images. Without hosting, if someone went to your website, your website would come up blank. Step two is to get your domain name. Your domain name is the same thing as your website name. Your domain name will probably be yourbusiness.com or yourname.com. Google's domain name is google.com and my domain name is tyler.com. In step three, we're gonna install WordPress. WordPress is a content management system, which just is a fancy way of saying it helps you manage all of your content like text and images. 
instead of having to know code, all you have to do is type in your text or drag in images just like you would in Microsoft Word. WordPress is used by Fortune 500 companies and people like Jay-Z and Katy Perry. It is also used by professional web developers and is by far the most popular content management system. In step four, we're gonna have some fun and create your website. But first, let's go over how much everything is going to cost. For hosting, which allows your website to be on 24 hours a day, it is going to cost $10 a month. For your domain name, which is the same thing as your website name, it's going to cost $13 a year. Luckily for us, WordPress is free. And because we're creating our website ourselves, instead of paying a web developer thousands of dollars, creating a website is also free. So the only thing that costs money are steps one and two, and I have a discount for both those steps. So to get started, it costs under $20. So let's begin and do steps number one and two, and luckily for us, we can do them at the same place. So go ahead and open your browser and type in www.hostgator.com. That's H-O-S-T-G-A-T-O-R.com. And this is where we're gonna get our domain name and our hosting from. Next, we're gonna click on web hosting in the top left. Then we're gonna click choose a plan. Now it's gonna give us options for three different plans, the hatching plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. We can eliminate the business plan because it's just too much for what we need. The difference between the hatching plan and the baby plan is the amount of domain names allowed. For the hatching plan, they only allow a single domain name like yourwebsite.com. On the baby plan, it allows unlimited domain names. So you can have yourwebsite.com, anotherbusiness.com, yourfriendswebsite.com, all on it. I personally have the baby plan, but if you know that you're only gonna have one website, then just go with the hatching plan. But because I'm gonna do what I did personally, we're gonna go with the baby plan. So we can choose here how long we want to make a commitment for. I usually like just to do it month to month, because then I know I can cancel at any time. But you can do six months at a time, a year at a time, two years at a time, or three years at a time to get a bigger discount. But let's just click on monthly. And then click sign up now. Next, it's gonna ask you to enter in your domain name, which is the same thing as your website name. Mine would be tyler.com, and if we check it, it's gonna to check to see if that is available and it's gonna say, no, it isn't available. Well, that's because I already own it. But you're gonna notice real quick that a lot of domain names are not available. So sometimes you have to get a little creative. So you're gonna put in your name or business right here and check to see if it's available. We can also check if the .org, .com, or .net are available right here. So then it's gonna ask you, do you wanna add in any of these? And I don't think it's necessary, so just don't do that. Next, if we scroll down, we just need to make sure that our package type is baby or hatchling, and our billing cycle is the one we chose. Our username is lowercase letters and some numbers, and our security pin is four to eight numbers. Next, we're gonna enter in our billing info, so that's email, address, all the standard stuff and our payment type. We can choose between credit card or PayPal. Then we're gonna scroll down and it's gonna ask you what additional services do you want and by default they're automatically checked. And we can always add these in later, so I'm gonna uncheck them because I don't think any of these are necessary. So just uncheck all of them and scroll down. Next it's gonna say enter a coupon code. This snappy is worth 20% but we have a better one. It is called 35, T-H-I-R-T-Y-F-I-V-E, and it's worth 35%, so it gives you a bigger discount. So if we look down here, we press validate, we see that it gives you a bigger discount. The coupon also gives me credit for referring you, so it helps me to continue to make these tutorials for free. So I really appreciate if you enter in my 35 coupon. All right, next we're gonna go down and make sure everything is right. 
24 7 365 phone live chat email support is free account activation free money back guarantee 45 days domain registration 12.95 uh baby plan 647 um subtotal 24.95 the discount 553 amount due is 1942 so it's under 20 dollars click i have read and agreed to the terms of service and press checkout next you're going to get a congratulations page welcoming you to the hostgator family and that's when you know it's time to check your email so i'm just going to go ahead and go to www.gmail.com and we can see we have our account information email so go ahead and click on it and it's going to give us all of our important account information like our usernames our control panel and our passwords so we're going to want to save this to our computer or print it out but first before we go on to the next step which is installing wordpress let's look at our progress so we've gotten hosting done and we've gotten our domain name done so the next thing is to install WordPress. And then after that, we're gonna create our website. So this is all really easy. And if you've gotten this far, you're doing a really great job. So let's move on to step three, installing WordPress. So to install WordPress, we have to log into our control panel, which is right here. Go ahead and click the link. And it's gonna ask us for our username and password. So our username is right here. We can just copy it or press Control C or Command C if you're on a Mac and paste it and copy our password and paste it and then press login now to install WordPress all we have to do is scroll down until we see software slash services and click quick install. This is the easy way to install WordPress. Once that loads up, click on WordPress on the left and press continue. Next, it's gonna ask you which website you wanna install WordPress on. I have the baby plan and lots and lots of websites, but you probably only have one website here so you can choose whatever website you want to install WordPress on and I'm going to install it on I'm already here.com. This box right here, you want to leave it blank because you don't want to install your website on I'm already here or your website.com slash something. You just want it to be installed on the main website. You can enable auto upgrades, keep that checked. And for the admin email, put your email address. And for the blog title, I'm just going to put, I'm already here. And for the admin username, I'm going to put Tyler. Obviously, all of this information is going to be different. And for your first name and last name, just fill that out. Then press install. Right now, it's installing WordPress, doing all the complex stuff for you. All right, then we're gonna get a congratulations, your website is ready. You can access it by going here. And the here takes us to our website, but if we check right now, it's not gonna work. And that's because it takes your website anywhere from two to four hours to work, and sometimes up to 24 hours. So we're gonna take a little break right now, and I'm gonna go hiking. And when I come back, we're going to check your website and see if it works. Okay, so I'm going to take a little break right now. See you soon. All right, so it's been about three hours, and we're going to check if our website works by clicking on the here button. So we click on it, and it opens up in a new tab, and we can see that it works. Some web developers charge a lot of money just to get you here. And we can see that it's already set up with the sample page. And a sample blog but this doesn't look very good I mean it's okay but it doesn't look great so how do we log into the back end and make it look amazing so what you do is you go back to your quick install and you're gonna want to save all of this information make sure that you've saved it 
and it tells you that the admin area is yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash admin and your username is Tyler, what you set up here for your admin user and your password is this really funky password. All right, so we're gonna go to ourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash ADMIN. Go to there and then it'll prompt you to log in with your username, which is Tyler. So I'm just gonna type Tyler and it is case sensitive, so you have to get the capitals in there. And the password, this really weird password. So we're just gonna copy that and right click and paste that. All right, now we can log in. Once we log in, the first thing that I like to do is change my password. So I'm gonna go to users on the left right here and click on my name. Then I'm going to scroll down and it says type in your new password. So I'm just going to type in my new password and press update profile at the bottom right here. Alright, once I do that I can go back to my dashboard and now we can check up on our progress, see how we're doing. So we've gotten our hosting, we've gotten our domain name, and now we've installed WordPress. So we're gonna put done on that. And our last thing that we're gonna do, and the most fun thing, is we're gonna start creating our website. So let's get to that. So what we can do now, as long as you change your password, we can exit out of this quick install tab. And also we can exit out of your email tab. Now it's very important to update WordPress to make sure that we have the latest updates. So we can do that by clicking on updates right here under home or up here. And we're just gonna press update now. All right, there we have it. It changed a little bit because now we have WordPress, uh, the latest version of WordPress. Yours may be a little different, but don't worry about that. All right, so now we are going to uninstall some of the things that came pre-installed with your website. This is some stuff that you just don't need, like this Marketplace and this Jetpack. Right now we're gonna install it. We're gonna make your WordPress a lot lighter and run a lot smoother. So we're going to go to plugins and plugins add functionality to your website, but some stuff is just, you know, the hosting company's marketing and stuff like that. So we don't need it all. So we're going to check off three plugins, the Jetpack, the Mojo and WP Super Cache. Then we're going to go up here and we're going to press deactivate because you have to deactivate a plugin before you can delete it. So we're gonna press deactivate, and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna check off Jetpack, Mojo Marketplace, and WP Super Cache. And don't worry if you don't have these, then they're already uninstalled. But if you do, we're gonna to want to delete them. So we're gonna go back up here, and we're gonna press delete. And we're gonna press apply. That way, all of everyone's WordPress is starting off the same. So we're gonna press yes, delete these files and data. All right, now you have an updated and clean version of WordPress installed on your website. The next thing that we're gonna do is install your website theme. Your website theme is the design of your website. If we look right now on your website, we can see that your website looks mostly black and white. And while this looks okay, it doesn't look amazing. And amazing is what we're going for. So to install a new website theme, what you do is you click on Appearance, Themes, and click Add New. There are thousands of themes to choose from, but most themes are not that great. And that's why I decided to make my own. If we open up a new tab and go to tyler.com, we can download it there. That's T-Y-L-E-R dot C-O-M.
It took lots of people, hundreds of hours and months of work to create this theme. It's also 100% free. And of course, I use the theme on my own website because I would never recommend something I truly didn't believe in. And as you can see, it is simple and beautiful. It has unlimited amount of colors, works on all computers, tablets, and cell phones, and I am so proud of it. It's called Tesseract. And to download it, simply go to the Tesseract theme page or underneath this YouTube video in the description, there's a link, or you can simply click on the download theme button in the top right. So go ahead and click on it and save the Tesseract theme to your desktop. Once it's on your desktop, you can go back to your dashboard and press upload themes. Remember, you have to press appearance and then add new and upload theme. Then choose file and find where you just downloaded it to. We downloaded it to my desktop. So here it is. Then click open. Then click install now. After you do that, click activate. And now your theme is activated. So we can go and visit our website. And congratulations, you have successfully installed the Tesseract theme. Now this black bar up here isn't part of the theme. This just indicates that you're logged in. You can log out by going over here and pressing log out. Then you'd have to go to your website.com forward slash WP admin to log back in. To get back to your dashboard, all you have to do is hover over your website name and go to dashboard up here. But we're not going to do that right now. The next thing that we're going to do is edit the header and footer colors so that they match perfectly with your business. To do that, once again, hover over your website name and click on customize. And this menu on the side will pop up and to change the header colors, let's click on header options. Then click on header colors and under header background color, press select color. Then you can change the colors to anything that you want. And this is why I love the Tesseract theme so much and one of the main reasons why I built it. So you can match your website colors with your business colors perfectly. This color right here corresponds with this code. If we change the code, then the color will change. And if we change the color, then the code will change. You can save your colors by just copying this code if you want to use your colors somewhere else later, like in your logo. I already have a color code, so I'm just going to paste it in there, and it's going to change our color to a nice blue color. Next, let's change the link colors up here. To do that, you can click on current color, or we can just scroll down, and not under header text color, that's something else, that's just for plain text up here but under header link color, press select color. Scroll down with your mouse, and you can change the colors of this to anything that you want. I'm gonna keep it as the default, but just know that you can do it. Then scroll down once again, and under header hovered link color, press select color, and that's when you're hovered over the links. I'll make it a different color so you can see the effect more dramatically. We're just going to use this as default also because I like the way it looks. After you do that, we can change the site title and tagline by clicking on it and changing the text. Right now it says I'm already here, which corresponds with this up here. And I'm just going to change it to Tyler, all in capitals. But probably you'll have your business name right here and your tagline. Your business name and tagline are important because that's what's going to show up when people look up your business in the search engines. Once you do that, click Save and Publish and go back and press the X arrow to return to your website. We can of course change the footer color options by following the same steps. The next thing that we're going to do is remove this sample page and add pages. We can do that by going to the dashboard and going to pages. 
Once we do that, we can hover over a sample page and throw it away in the trash. Then add a new page up here by clicking Add New. And we're going to add a home page, H-O-M-E, and press Publish. We're going to keep all these pages blank right now. We're just adding the pages themselves. After that, we can go to Pages again and press Add New. And let's make an About page. About and press Publish. Click on Add New and click and press Our Work. Type out Our Work and press Publish and Add New. And obviously, you can add your own pages. Type in Services, Publish and add new and let's type in contact and publish all right so now we've added some pages we can see all the pages if we click on pages over here we can see about contact home our work and services this is all the pages that we're going to have on our website but if we go to our website right now we're going to see that there are two homes and this is all out of order. We want the contact to be over here and the services over here. So how do we rearrange it and how do we take off this home? Well, that's pretty easy. If we go back to our dashboard and we click on appearance, then menus, and we can create a new menu. And by creating a menu, we have full control over it. I'm just going to call this menu main. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Then press create menu. Once we do that, we need to add different pages to the menu because right now it's all blank. So I'm going to add the contact, services, our work, about, and home, and press add to menu. Now I'm going to rearrange them. I'm going to drag, click and drag home to the very top, then about right under it, then our work, services, and finally contact last. For, for theme locations, I'm going to check off primary menu to make it the main menu on the very top. Then I'm going to press save menu. Now if we go ahead and look at our website, we can see that our website is looking really good because the menu is now in the order we want. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our home page. Right now our home page is set to show our blog post, but we don't want it to do that. We want it to be set to the page that we named home. So to do that, we're going to go to dashboard and under settings, we're going to go to reading. Then where it says front page displays, instead of your latest post, choose a static page and set your front page to home, the page that you named home. Then scroll down and press save changes. Now if we visit our page, we're going to see that our home page is just the page that we created called home, which is exactly what we want. So how do we edit our home page and add our own content all right here and maybe get rid of this sidebar because we don't really need it on our home page. So the way we do that is we can click edit page up here or we can go back into our dashboard and go to pages and find home. So now we can type whatever we want. I can say hello my name is Tyler Moore copy that a couple of times so it looks full and we can press update and we can view our page now this is just like Microsoft Word where you can add images and bold text and uh, create bullet points or center things or make links to other uh, pages and so we can view page after we update it we can view page and we can see that it has our content in there 
and that looks pretty good. But what if we want to get rid of this sidebar right here because we don't need to show it? So once again, the quick way to get back to editing the home page is to press edit page up here. We can do that and instead of the default template down here under page attributes, we can choose the full width page and press update. And then we can view our page. And that is looking pretty good, better than most websites, but we don't want it to look good. We want it to look amazing. So how do we make this website and your homepage look amazing? What I think I want to do is I want to get rid of this home right here and have an image that goes all the way across really big and some beautiful fonts right here in the middle that we can control. But how do we do all this? WordPress by default doesn't allow you to do it. So what we need is plugins that allow you to remove the title of the homepage, that allow you to put in this big image, that allow you to put in beautiful fonts. So let's add in some plugins so that we can do all these cool things. To add plugins, simply roll over your website name and click on dashboard. And after you do that, just go down a little bit and click on plugins and then click add new. We're gonna be adding eight plugins and you don't need to know what they all do right now. I'll explain that as the tutorials go on. All right, so the first plugin that we're gonna get over here in the search bar, we're gonna type in site, S-I-T-E, origin, O-R-I-G-I-N. And this one is the page builder. It's what allows you to put those big images all the way across your website and to edit your page visually. So we can look at the downloads and the star rating and click install now. Press OK. And then click activate. Then click add new because we're adding another plugin. So that was the first one. We have seven more to go. So we have eight in total. This one is also by Site Origin. That's S I T E O R I G I N. And this one is the Site Origins Widget Bundle. Click Install Now and press OK. This one allows you to put in a map on your contact page. So click Activate Plugin. That is two of eight. Let's click Add New to add another one. All right, this one is called Easy Google Fonts. Press Search. Easy Google Fonts and press install now. This one allows you to put really cool fonts and change how the fonts look, what color they are, how big they are, and how they're positioned. It's really cool. Install now, okay. And activate. This stuff is really easy. All right, for number four, we're going to press add new and we're going to type in black. Studio. This is what allows the page builder to be visual. So it doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but it will uh, when we get to that section. So Black Studio Tiny MCE, click install now and press OK. Click on activate and click on add new. The next one is called title remover, T-I-T-L-E remover and this one allows you to remove the title like when it says home on the home page it allows you to get rid of that which looks a lot cleaner a lot of the times click install now and press ok on title remover all right number six is contact form seven so we're going to add new this is for the contact page and it allows you to, it allows your user to uh, just fill out a form instead of having to copy and paste your email address. So press activate plugin. So it just adds a form to your website. All right, the next one for number seven is called Spacer, S-P-A-C-E-R. Press enter and press install now. This one allows you to control the spacing of your website better. And it'll make sense real quick. Press activate plugin. And press add new. 
And the last and final one is called light box plus color box. And this is so when you have a video or image, it come, it pops up in a box instead of taking you to a new page. So it's really cool. All right, press install now on light box plus color box, press okay, and activate. Now we have all of the plugins that we need activated and installed on our website. The next thing that we're gonna do is edit our home page. So we could just click on pages and click on home. And as we can see, we can edit this page just like normal, but there is one difference. Up here, there's a new tab called Page Builder, and that's because we downloaded the Page Builder plugin. Go ahead and click on it. And before we begin building your website, let me give you an example of how it works. The first thing that it does, if we switch back to our regular visual editor, is it takes your content from here and puts it inside the Page Builder. So it puts it in this little box. Now, the next thing that we can do is add different rows. So adding rows gives you control of how many columns you have in each row. Let me give you an example. So let's click on add row. And we can see that we have two columns on our page now, 50% and 50%. That means you can have content over here and content over here, which wasn't possible with the regular visual editor. We can also add more columns by clicking on this top button up here or pressing the down button. So let's add 33, 33, 33, three different columns and press insert. That adds a different row with three different columns. If we click on the first column and press add widget, we can add all of these different widgets in here that we want. But the one that we want to add most of the time is the visual editor. And this is why we had to download the Black Studio Tiny MCE plugin. And if you don't see the visual editor here, go ahead and download that. So click on it and it inserts right here. Now we can edit it and edit it just like the visual editor where we can type in content or paste in content and press done. Now there's content in that column. We can duplicate it and duplicate it again and click and drag. Click, hold and drag. So now there are three different columns with content in it and a top column, I mean a top row with content in it that goes all the way across. Let's update it and see what our website looks like. Click on the update button and press view page. So we can see that the top row right here goes all the way across and the bottom one has three different columns. And it looks a lot better than most websites because it allows you to add these different columns and it looks very cool. Let's go back to edit page and let's try to get rid of this home up here. So we'll click on edit page. And if we remember that we downloaded the title remover plugin, so where it says high title, check it off and press update. And now we can view the page and our title should be gone. So that looks really cool. Most websites don't look like that. And that's pretty awesome. So what we want to do here is we can see that it is really close to the navigation. How do we add some space to that? So we can once again, press edit page and go over here and press edit. Make sure not to press up here, but down here, edit, and click before the H and press enter, and add this new thing right here where it says add spacer. And as you can remember, we downloaded the spacer plugin for this. Spacer, and it says 20 pixels. The PX stands for pixels, and the 20 is how big it is. We measure things in inches or meters, and the computer measures things in pixels. So 20 pixels isn't that much, but we can change it to 30 and it'll add more space. So press done and update. Then view page. 
And as we can see, it added 30 pixels of space and this website is looking a lot better. Now we can go back to edit page. And again, we wanna make sure that it is on the full width template right here. Because if it's not, then we're gonna see sidebars on the side of our website. So make sure it says full width page. As much as I love what we did here, it's not spectacular, it was just an example. So let's go ahead and delete this row and press yes, I'm sure, and delete this row and press yes. Now we're started with a blank page. And now we can start building your homepage. But before we do, I like to download some really high resolution, great looking, amazing, spectacular images. I think that's what really inspires people to go to a website and what makes them think that a website is really good, just like a really big picture, like a painting on your website. So what we can do is we can go to uh, a website called unsplash.com and we can open up a new tab or window and go to unsplash.com and these are free do whatever you want high resolution photos so you can use them on your website or uh, wherever else you need to use them. I like to click on the grid mode and browse through all of the all of these images and you can just right click and save them to your desktop. Make sure to make them bigger uh, by clicking on them and just saving them to your desktop. So you go like this, right click, save image as, and save it to your desktop. I have already downloaded all of my images. So we're just gonna go to tyler.com and download all of the images that I use on the website at once. Then we can click on learn or blog and Go ahead and click on it and then click watch the video and view instructions and these are all the instructions for this video. Then we can click on download images and it's going to download a zip file with all of the images that I use on the website. So just click on download images and once it's downloaded save that to your desktop. So I'm just going to drag that to my desktop right now and I named it content2015.zip. And what we're gonna do here is, here it is. We are, you're gonna see this file on your desktop. Just go ahead and double click on it and it will unzip it into a folder. Now this folder has all of the content that we need on it. It has all the icons, the logos, and all of the images that we use in this tutorial. So we're gonna need to, this for later. All right, so now we can go back to our website and we can close this tab right here. Then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to add a new row. And this row is only gonna, is gonna be 100%, so it's not gonna be divided into two. So we're gonna go 100% and we're gonna press insert. And now we need to add the visual editor to this. So we can click on it and press add widget. Then go down and click on visual editor. And we can edit our content just like normal by going up here and pressing edit, but that's not what we wanna do. We wanna add in a beautiful background image on our website. So we can do that by clicking on this wrench icon up here and clicking on edit row. And under layout over here, we wanna make sure that it is full width layout. So under row layout, make sure it's full width. And then we can click this to minimize it. And under design, we can scroll down. And we want it, the background image display to be cover instead of tile. And I'll explain that later. And we want to select the background image. So let's select it and select files or drag files onto here and press select files and find the 2015-content on your desktop and we're going to upload the explore.jpg and press open wait for it to upload and press done then we're going to press save 
and we're gonna press update. So now we should have a beautiful background on our homepage, but if we view the page, we're not gonna see it. So I'm gonna click view page, and we're just gonna see this tiny, tiny bit. And why is that? That's because we have no content in here. There is nothing inside this visual editor, so it has no height. We can fix that by pressing edit and adding a spacer here. So add the spacer, and that's because we downloaded the spacer plugin. So click on that, and let's change this from 20 to 600 pixels. So that's pretty big. Press done and update. Now when we view our home page, we should see that all of that space and it should be beautiful and it is. So that's pretty awesome. So the next thing that we're going to do is put text in the middle of our image and I can show you an example. If we go to apple.com, you can see that they have the header right here that doesn't waste any space, just like ours and a big image that gets your attention with text in the middle. We have that image, but we don't have the text yet. And most of the time, the image goes all the way across on apple.com. We could probably go to a different page and see, yeah, that this image goes all the way across and they have text in the middle. And this is what they've you know, shown that gets people's attention. They've spent millions of dollars on getting their homepage right. And so we should model after them and not like internet marketers or people like that. Let's really just go for the best companies to model your business after. So how do we do all this? Well, there's an easy way and um, a really easy way. <laughs> Let's do the easy way first. So we can close Apple. We can just click on edit page and go ahead and click on your visual editor, click on edit. And we can see that our spacer height is 600 pixels tall. So let's actually, sorry, let's open Apple again. And we can see that they actually changed their website. <laughs> that was fast. Okay, now the image goes all the way across like I was talking about before. So that's pretty cool. Let me show you how to do it the really easy way by recreating this Apple uh, homepage. So we can see that there's about 100 pixels of space on top. So let's go ahead and just put 100 pixels of space. Then the next thing that we notice, and we could just like hit enter to go to the next line. The next thing that we notice is uh, this logo right here. So let's go ahead and go to logomaker.com, L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R.com. And let's actually search for an Apple logo. And this is just an example to show you what it can do. Um, all right, that's fine. Let's click on it and let's make it white. And we can't see it right now, but it's there. We can save it. We can save it to our desktop. And we don't need to copy the credits because this is just an example. All right, so I'm gonna drag that to my desktop, save it to my desktop, and um, add in the logo. So we'll add media and we'll upload files and we'll select files and we'll find that logo it's called drawing seven and press open. All right, make sure it's the full size right here, not just the thumbnail and it links nowhere. So when you click on it, nothing happens. And then we can insert into page. All right, so now that logo is there, we can't see it cause it's white, but let's make it a lot smaller. Uh, maybe about like that. Cause their logo is pretty small right here. All right, and then they have uh, text and it says shot on iPhone 6. So shot on iPhone 6, okay? And then let's press enter again. And it says view the world gallery and it's a link. So we'll just type that out, view the world gallery and a uh, greater than sign and that's a link. Okay, we'll do the link later. Press enter and then it has more space at the bottom here. Maybe 100 pixels or 200. I'm just gonna put 200 pixels, so add spacer. 
200 pixels okay and then this is bigger so this is more like a headline so let's um, highlight it instead of paragraph let's go to headline one all right and then let's make this one a link by highlighting it and pressing the link button and let's say maybe it could link to our services page. Press add link. And then we need everything to be centered. So let's um, highlight everything and press the align center button. And let's change the color of this because it's not black. They have it as white, but that's not really going to work with our image because it's very light. So let's make it like a blue. So if we highlight it and then um, we can make a custom color if we want. And maybe like the same color as our navigation bar. Somewhere like that. And we'll make this the same color. All right, then we'll press done. So we have 100 pixels of space. Uh, the logo, shot an iPhone 6, view the world gallery, and 200 uh, pixels of space at the bottom. Press done and update. And press view page. All right, so that was just a quick example of how to do it the easy way, and it looks really good, but it doesn't look perfect. As we can see on the Apple homepage, the shot on iPhone 6 is a lot bigger, this spacing is better, and this spacing is better and the font is much better. So how do we do that? And I'm gonna show you, but it's gonna be uh, the way that it's a little harder, but not hard at all, it's gonna be so easy. So let's go ahead and learn how to do it that way and start building your homepage. So let's exit out of Apple and exit out of Logo Maker. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna try to create text right here, but text that we can control. So I wanna be able to increase this font size. I wanna be able to change the colors. I wanna be able to change the spacing. So how do we get text on our homepage that we can control? And it's pretty easy. We can just go to edit page. And let's open up a new tab and go to tyler.com because there's some code that we need to copy. We can type it out, it's just as easy, but it's maybe a little easier to copy it. Then click on learn. And this is what we're going for right here where it says explore. We're trying to create that and trying to make a sub headline and some buttons. So click on watch the video and view instructions and scroll down and where it says create home page we're going to want to copy the headline code now this may seem fancy it is a little html but it's really what's going to separate you from all the other websites and it's really easy you just highlight it and right click and press copy all right then what we can do is just paste in the code so just hover over here and press edit and let's get rid of all of this stuff by highlighting it, pressing delete, and clicking on text. Click on text, and just right click and paste. Now, of course, you can type all of this in. It's really easy. Um, but let's explain what we're doing here. So this beginning span marks the start of the text that we want to control. And this end span ends where we're uh, ending the control. So we're controlling everything in between these two spans. So we're controlling this explore text. Now in order to control it, we need to name it something. So we're naming it, the class is equal to home headline. And it's really easy. So let me give you another example. Let's press enter to go on a new line. And let's copy the subheadline. So we'll highlight it and press copy or control C if you're on a PC or command C if you're on a Mac and let's paste it. And if it does that, just put it there and press enter. It'll go on a new line. All right, so we did that. Now we have the headline and the subheadline. So this headline is called home headline. You can name it whatever you want, home dash headline. It can't have any spaces in it. And this one is called home dash sub for home subheadline. All right, so they're named two different things and 
we name them differently so we could control them independently of each other. And it'll make more sense in a second. All right, we also need to uh, copy some button codes. So this is a button code and we can just highlight it and press copy and we'll paste it on a new line. And so we want one button there and one button right next to it. So this is the next button. I have it all set up for you. Just copy and paste. There we go. And we want them on the same line so they're not on top of each other. All right. And this is the link. So this is going to our website.com slash about for the first button. And this button is going to our website.com slash our work where it says href equals and a double quote. That's the link that it's going to slash our work. And this is the button text. So it's going to say view our work. And this is the button text here where it says our mission. So again, HTML is the same where it has a beginning and an ending. And this has a beginning and an ending by a slash A and a beginning and an ending. And all the text in between it is the text that you're going to see. All right, so let's see if we click done what that looks like. Let's press update and let's press view page. Okay, so as we can see, it looks really bad, but our buttons are here and they go to the, the about page. If we click on it, it goes to slash about. And if we click on this one, it goes to slash our work. So that's cool that we got the buttons in here, but obviously this doesn't look that great. So let's go ahead and edit page again. And what we want to do is add some space to the bottom of the website. So let's go ahead and press edit. So after this, just go back to visual and let's add in a spacer and let's make this 300 pixels because we want a lot of space at the bottom. And then let's highlight everything and let's make it all centered. So let's press align center. So everything aligns center. All right. And then let's press done and update. So now we can look at our website and we see that everything is centered and there is some more space at the bottom here and it looks good, but it doesn't look amazing. So let's make it look amazing. All right. So let's go over here and go to customize. Then click on typography and theme typography. This is the font controls that you made. So remember you made home headline and home subheadline. Well, that's going to control these fonts over here. So let's go ahead and edit font. And now this is for the home headline. We can choose any of these fonts from the font family. We have hundreds and hundreds of fonts to choose from. And when we click on it, it's going to change up here, which is really cool now that we have access to all of these fonts. All right. I have a font in mind, so I'm just going to type in Roboto and not Roboto slab, just the regular Roboto. Okay. So we're going to see it changes. And the font weight is how heavy a font is. So you can make it look really heavy and dense like that, or we can make it look really uh, lighter or just regular. Let's go with regular. For theme decoration, we can do underline or overline. We don't need any of that. For text transformation, we can make it all lowercase or uppercase. We don't need any of that either. All right, so now let's go to appearance and let's change the font color. So again, we can choose from any color we want. Anything we want, it's gonna change the font color. I have a color in mind, so I'm just gonna paste it right in there and it should change. All right, so it changed to that nice blue. For font size, let's make the font really big. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. For line height, I'm just gonna drag it so it has no height, so this is right under it. 
And for letter spacing, it's how big or small the letters are to each other, close they are to each other. I'm just gonna keep it at about six. And then I'm gonna go to positioning. And this is where it gets really cool. I can mess with the margin, which is how much space it has, um, and the padding, which is also how much space it has. They're almost the same thing, but it doesn't really make a difference what you choose. I'm just gonna cho choose margin. And for the top, I'm gonna look at that. Isn't that cool? So you can add any as much space as you want to it. So it really allows you to control it. And this is why it was so important to add in those codes so that you're able to control these things. All right, so I'm gonna add about right there, I think looks pretty good. And um, now I think that's all for that one. Let's see, yeah, that's all for that one. Now I'm gonna minimize all of this right here. And now I'm going to edit the home subheadline. So let's go ahead and do that and click on this. And again, for the font family, you could choose anything, but I'm gonna, again, choose Roboto. You don't wanna have a million different fonts going on your website. Roboto is one of the best ones. So we're gonna choose Roboto, and for the font weight, I'm just gonna do 300, make it a little more dense so you can see it better. And for the appearance, for the font color, I'm gonna choose like a, some sort of gray, maybe 51, 51, 51. That looks good. We could choose a background color if we want, but that's not necessary. Uh, for the font size, let's make it a little bigger. Let's do 20 pixels. That looks pretty good, maybe a little less, 19 pixels. And for the line height, we can change that if we want to, to 0.8, doesn't really matter. And for the, uh, we want this to have a little more space in between the buttons. It looks a little cramped. Um, so let's go to positioning and for the margin, let's do a bottom margin of like 30, 37 pixels. All right, so now it's looking really good. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's exit out of here. And as we can see, our button sort of gets lost because it has a light background and it's just really light. I want the button to be more down here. So how can I do that? Well, one way to do it is to add more space in between here. And that's easy, we just learned how to do that. Another way is to reposition the background so it's more centered. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we go ahead and edit page and click on this wrench right here and press edit row. And under the design tab, under background image, press select image. We're gonna be selecting the same image but we're gonna be editing the image. So click edit image after you select it. Now what we're doing here is we're gonna just crop a little bit off of the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make click and hold a selection of everything that we want. That looks pretty good, so just a little bit. And then we're gonna press the crop button. Once we do that, we're gonna click save and we're gonna click update. Then we can exit out of this tab and press refresh, then done. Save our page and update and view our page. And now we can see that everything has moved down a little bit and we can see our buttons perfectly. So that looks really cool and really good. If we want more buttons, we can go to tyler.com and click on the Tesseract theme and scroll down and find all of these buttons here. And you can use them right in here. So that's pretty cool. All right, now we're on a roll. This is all gonna get easier and easier. The next thing we're gonna do is create another headline. So let's click on the learn section and we can see right here, it says making the world a better place. We're gonna go ahead and do that. You can obviously put whatever text you want in there. So let's watch the video and view instructions. 
and let's scroll down until we find creating another headline. So we're going to create a new row that goes 100% across. So let's edit our page and add a row. We want this to go 100% across, 100, and press insert. Then let's add a visual editor. So click on it and add widget. Scroll down, visual editor. Then click on edit. Now make sure you're in the text because we're going to be copying in some code and not visual. So click on the text tab and go back to the instructions and we can type this out if we want, but it's easier just to copy it, copy it and paste it in here. Now go back to the visual tab and let's highlight it and center it. Okay, then press done. And we're all done with that. Now what we need to do is create a Google font control. So let's update this. And go to settings and Google fonts. Now we need to create a new font control. So create a new font control. And name this whatever you want, something memorable. I like to do what the page name is, home and what the first word is, so making, because it says making the world a better place. This is just for you, so you can name it whatever you want. Then press create font control. Now we have to add the CSS selector, and that sounds fancy, but all it means is adding in this right here. It is a class, so we have to put a dot in front of it. So it has to be dot home dash making. Dot is just a shorthand for class. So let's put in dot home dash making. And if you click anywhere off of it, then it registers it. Then let's press save font control. All right, then we can go to our website by hovering over and pressing visit site and hovering over and pressing customize. And if we scroll down right here, it says making the world a better place. It's not the size or color that we want it, but it's a good start. So let's click on typography and theme typography. Now you see home making and under it, click edit font. Now we can get all the properties that we want for the font over here. So we can see the font family Roboto. 100, the color, and the font size. Let's copy the color. So let's type in Roboto here. Font weight is 100. That's great. The font color, we have it copied. So let's just paste it in here. That nice gray. And then the font size is 37 pixels. All right, now that's looking much better. So let's click Save and Publish and go back. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is add three different featured sections under this headline. That would be Services, Our Work, and Contact. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we do is we Edit Page, and we add a new row. This one's going to have three different columns and press insert. Then click on the first column and press add widget. Then scroll down and click on visual editor. All right, then roll over it and click on edit. Okay, so this one's gonna have an image right here and then uh, a headline and then text below it and a button. Okay, so first thing we have to do is we have to get an icon. So let's go ahead and get an icon. Let's go to logomaker.com. So open up here and go to L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R.com. It doesn't have an E in there. 
So now we can search for our graphics. The three icons that I used, I searched for float, gallery, and ocean. So the first one we can search for float, F-L-O-A-T, and press enter and find the correct icon and click on it. All right, and we can make it bigger or smaller and we can change the color by clicking on this and changing the color around to anything we want. I already have a specific color, so I'm gonna go back to my instructions and copy that color. This is called a hex color code. And we can paste it in here and it becomes the exact color that we need it to become. All right, now what we can do is we can crop this because we need all of these icons to be the same height because if they're not, then it's gonna look uneven and it's gonna look weird on your website. So what we can do is press the crop button down here and we wanna crop it to 209 pixels tall and 209 wide. Sorry, it goes width first. So width, 209 wide by 209 tall height. All right, and it doesn't fit, but we can easily just scale this down and make it fit perfectly. That's pretty good. And you can always click on it and use your mouse pointers, arrows to make it perfect. Maybe we can make it go down a little bit. All right, so that's pretty good. Once we do that, we have 209 by 209, we can press save. And we can save this to our desktop if we want to. All right, it says click here to copy credits. And someone built this icon for free, but what they want you to do is give them credit for it. So we're gonna make a credits page on our website later, but for now we're just gonna click and copy it. And then we're gonna open up something like Notepad on Windows or Text Edit on Mac, and we're just gonna paste that in there. So this just gives them credit for it. And later I'm gonna show you how to make a credits page after the home page. All right, so once we do that, we can do that for the rest of the three icons. I already did it, and uh, it's in the image folder that you downloaded in the beginning of this tutorial. So we're just gonna use those icons. All right, so we're gonna exit this, make sure to copy all the credits and keep them safe. Then we're gonna go back into our visual editor and add media. So we're gonna upload files and select files. All right, so on my desktop, I have the 2015-content that we downloaded earlier in the video that's on the website instructions page. So we're just gonna click that and click on icons and I'm gonna insert the float icon and press open. All right, so there it is. I'm gonna make sure that it's full size and I'm not gonna have it link anywhere. I could have it link to the services page, but I'm not gonna do that. Then I'm gonna click insert into page. And there it goes, it inserts our new icon. Then I'm gonna press return and I'm gonna make a services headline. And I'm gonna make this into, I'm gonna highlight it and make it into H2, so heading two. Then I'm gonna make a new line and I'm gonna paste in some text. Okay, and then I'm gonna make a new line and I'm gonna add a button. So this button is gonna to link to the services page. So if we go here, we can copy in the button, but you can see this is the Our Work page. So we wanna change where it links to and change what it says right here. So what we have to do is because we're pasting in code, we have to go back to the text. All right, and just after the We Help You Relax, that line, just make a new line and paste in the button. All right, but we have to change this um, href or the link from our work to services. So what we can do is we can change the text to view services, view services, and we need to change this to slash services. And why slash services? Well, 
if we look at our website, we can see that the services page goes to ourwebsite.com forward slash services. We don't need this ending slash right here. So because that's where the page is located. So we need to put that right here, services. All right, once we do that, we can go back to visual and we can highlight everything and center it. Then press done and update and we can view our progress. So let's look at it. And that's looking pretty good. I like that. So let's do that for the rest of these. So let's uh, make in our work and make a contact just the same way. So let's go ahead and edit page and click right here and press add widget. Let's do the visual editor and press edit. Let's add the media, upload files and select files. Let's click on gallery and press open. Let's make sure it's the full size and it doesn't link anywhere and press insert into page. Once it's inserted, let's make a new line and type our work. Once we do that, let's highlight it and make it a heading two. Then add a new line and paste in some of our code. Add a new line after that and go to the text tab. Then copy in the code right here and paste it. Then go back to visual and highlight everything and let's align center. Now we didn't need to change this our work button because uh, it's the correct button and link. Then press done and press update. Now we can view our work by clicking on the view page and it's looking really good because these are the same height and everything. So that looks awesome. This goes to the services page. This goes to the our work page. Let's do this one more time and let's do this for the contact. All right, so let's edit page. Let's click right here and press add widget. Then scroll down and click visual editor. Then press edit. Then let's add new media and upload files and select files. Let's select the ocean squid and press open. Make sure that it is full size and it links to nowhere and insert into page. Then make a new line and type contact us. Highlight it and make it a heading two. Make it a new line and paste in some text. Go back to the text tab and paste in the button. So let's go over to the button and copy it. But again, we need to change the text right here to contact us and the link to slash contact. So go over here and paste it. And make this say contact us and slash contact because that's where our page is located. Then go back to visual, highlight everything, and align center. And I'm going faster because we've already done all of this before. And press done and update. Now we can look at our page and we can see that it is really coming together and looking awesome. This goes to the services page. This one goes to the our work page. And this one goes to the contact page. And it's looking really great. So next, let's finish off this home page and add some call to action text and buttons at the bottom right here. But before we do that, let's make this background a little brighter. It's a little dim. Let's make it perfectly white. To do that, 
we just go to customize and click on general and click background color. Let's make this color pure white by sliding this over to FFFFF and going to save and publish. All right, now that it's white, it looks a little brighter and it pops a little more. Let's add the uh, call to action buttons and text right here. So what we do is we edit page and let's add a new row. Let's have this be 50-50 and insert. All right, now let's add a visual editor. So just click on this and add widget. Scroll down, add a visual editor, then click edit. Now what we wanna do, we can close this, is we want to paste in some code. And to paste in code, you click on the text tab. Go up here and let's find add bottom call to action. So we did all this. Let's copy this and it's gonna say our work. All right, so we paste it in there and let's add a new line and let's uh, have some code underneath it also. Okay, so we have our work. We believe actions speak louder than words. Okay, and then press done. And now let's go over here and click on this row and click add widget and let's add a visual editor. Then click edit, and now let's add some buttons to this. So we'll go to text, and this is uh, copying two different buttons. So this is one button where the A starts and where it ends, and this is another button. So let's copy both buttons, and let's paste them in right here. Okay, so now we have two buttons and we can change where they link to or what they say and we can change how they look. All right, let's go back to visual and let's actually make both of these buttons centered. So let's highlight it and put center and press done. Okay, then we're gonna press update. Now if we view the page, we're gonna see that it looks okay. I mean, obviously we need to control the Google fonts here. And also this runs into this. So they look like they really blend in together. How do we make it so that it's sectioned off? And we can do that by changing this background color right here. So let's go ahead and change that background color by going to edit page and clicking on the wrench and click edit row. Go to design and we wanna make sure that the background color, select color, is like a very light gray. Maybe we want like FA, FA, FA. So let's just type that in there, FA, FA, FA. Okay, so that's a very light gray. We also wanna to go to layout and make sure that it's not the standard layout, but it's the full width. So that the color goes all the way across all right, then press save and press update. Now if we view the page, we can see that the color goes all the way across and it's a very light gray. It looks very professional and it's easy on the eyes because this is one section, this is another section, and then this is a third section. Okay, so we need more space up here and we need to control these Google fonts. So let's go back and add space here and let's uh, see what these fonts are called so that we know what to add. So let's go to edit page and to add space, that's easy. We can just press edit, press enter and add in a spacer. Let's do 30. We could do that again, press enter, add in another spacer. Let's say that's 30. Okay, so we added two 30 uh, spacers. Press done, we've added the spacers. Now let's see what these are called. This is called home R and home we. So let's add those Google fonts. 
So we press done and update. Then go to settings and Google fonts. Create a new Google font. This is home hour. Create Google font. And again, that is dot home dash hour. Dot home dash hour. All right, and save Google font. And we'll create a new one, and this is home we. Home we. Create font control. And this one again is dot home dash we. Dot home dash we. Okay, save font control. And now let's go back to our website and go to customize. And, type, and click theme typography, there it is. And now we have two more Google fonts, home R and home we. So let's scroll down and let's try to get this in the center and looking good. So what are the settings for our work? So we go down here and we see this is the settings for our work. Roboto 300, this color, 35.8 and 38. All right, so for our, go down. The font family is Roboto. The font weight was 300. The font color we copied was that color. Let's paste it in there. The font size was 35 pixels. 35, good. And the line height was 0.8. So just drag that all the way to the left. And the top margin was 38 pixels, but we could just play with it, see where it looks good. All right, about there, maybe a little more. All right, 44-ish. Okay, and uh, now we can do that for the next one. So we can just minimize this and go to home we and see what those settings are. So that's Roboto 300, this color, and 0.8. Okay, so font family, Roboto, font weight 300, font color, that color, and line height 0.8. All right, so there we have it. We press save and publish. And now we can look at our work. And as we can see, our website is really starting to look amazing. So the next thing that we're gonna do is add a logo. It's gonna be a really simple logo, but you can make yours as complex as you want. Hover over your name and click on Customize. And then click on General. And then click on Logo. Now let's go to logomaker.com. That's L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R.com. And let's search for a graphic. Let's just search for Compass. C-O-M-P-A-S-S. -S. And let's scroll down and find a compass that we like. I think I like this one. So I'm going to click on it, make it a little bigger, and I'm actually going to make it white. So I'm just going to click and make it white. Now we can't see it right now, but if we right click and make the background black, then we can see it better. But it doesn't really matter. We're just going to save this to our desktop. So click save and drag it to your desktop or save it to your desktop and make sure you copy your credits. And you can always go back to your uh, logo by going to here. It saves it for you. So click there and copy the credits. And make sure to paste it in something like a text editor. So we'll just paste it there to give the person who made the compass credit for their work. All right, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to close 
logo maker. And we're going to select an image and upload files and select files. All right, so it's in our 2015 content, that logo, under logo. And we'll just press open. And we'll click choose image. And it's going to put our logo in right there. So that's pretty awesome. Then we're going to click save and publish. Once we do that, we can create a credits page. So down here, I don't want it to be in my na main navigation because that would look ugly and weird. I want it to be down here at the footer. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another menu because this is one menu and we need another menu down here that's separate. So uh, let's actually create a page first. So let's go to our dashboard and go to pages and add new. This is just going to be called credits. And we're going to go to text and we're just going to paste in all of uh, the credits that we have. Credits and paste it in here. Okay, if we go back to visual, you'll see what it's going to look like. If you want, you can uh, give me credit and you can say, uh, thanks, Tyler, and link to uh, my website. We'll say, uh, thanks, Tyler. Um, create a website and highlight the create a website and press the link and go to www.tyler.com and press add link. This really helps me out because the search engines rank you by this text. And every time someone links to me, it's like a vote and I rank higher in the search engines. So I appreciate if you guys do give me some uh, credit, that'd be awesome. All right, so now we're gonna go with template, we're gonna go full width page and we're gonna press publish. And we're gonna press view page. So this is what our new credits page looks like. It's really simple and easy and pretty cool. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the dashboard and we're gonna create a menu. So go to appearance and menus and we're gonna create a new menu. So we're gonna call this menu name footer because it's at the bottom like your feet and press create menu. Then we're gonna add different pages over here. So maybe we'll add the credits, contact, about, and home, and add to menu. Then we'll rearrange them. Let's do home first, then contact last, and credits third. All right, then press save menu. Once you do that, we let's go back and visit our site. And we see that it got kind of messed up. It made this uh, navigation up here and down here, the, the credits navigation. Let's go ahead and go to customize and go to header options and header menu. And let's set the header menu to the main menu. There we go, that's better. And let's go back and let's go to footer options and set the footer content to the footer menu. And we can see that it's changed now. We can also display our logo, which is pretty cool, in the footer if we want. And then click Save and Publish. Exit out of here. And the next thing that we're going to do is create our About page. So you can go ahead and click on it. And the first thing we need to do is make this full width and get rid of this title right here. So just click on edit page and change the template to full width and remove the title. Press update and let's check our work by clicking view page. All right, now that we have a nice blank canvas here, I wanna add in a big image right here and some text right here. And by the way, the home page was the hardest page to make. Everything is going to get easier and easier. All right, so let's do that. Let's click on Edit Page and go to Page Builder. 
then click on add widget and let's add a visual editor it automatically adds a row for you all right now we can click on the wrench and press edit row then click design and let's upload our background image press select image upload files and select files all right so it's in a folder and it is me Tyler about there it is press open wait for it to upload and press done instead of tiled image let's do cover and press save the difference between tile and cover is tile is like tiles it'll keep on repeating and cover is like uh, centered and if you expand it it just expands with it so do covered and press save now let's uh, edit our visual editor by clicking on the edit button <clears throat> and make sure we're in text and let's paste in our code so here it is our about headline and we've done this before so I'm gonna go a little quicker it's called about dash headline we can paste it in here there it is and let's go to visual and let's center it what I want to do also is I want it to not go all the way across because that would look weird so I want it to uh, go mostly across and then have a line break after start so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift and press enter and that makes a new paragraph a new mini paragraph if I just held press enter or return regularly it would add a really big gap but if I hold shift and enter or return it's just gonna go right underneath and that's what we want all right so let's press done with that and let's press update now what we want to do is we want to add a new Google font control so go to settings and Google fonts now we can create a new Google font by clicking create a new Google font and naming it about headline press create Google font and let's type in the CSS selector which is if we remember about dash headline so dot about dash headline and I know you're getting good at this headline and then press save font control all right now that we have a Google font we can go to our home page and click on the about page and it doesn't look that great now but we're gonna change that hover over your website name and go to customize click on typography and under theme typography you now have about headline font control click on edit and let's get all of the settings I think the font family again is Roboto okay the font weight and style is 100 if we go to appearance the font color is the same uh, but we are putting in a background color so let's put in a background color and let's make it all the way white all right we can't see it now but we will be able to for the letter spacing let's space it out a little more at two pixels and sorry for the um, whoopsie daisy for the font size let's go to something bigger like 23 all right and all of these settings are over here if we look over here 23 white two pixels letter spacing margin top let's do 174 about doesn't need to be perfect margin top 174 it's starting to look better all right and margin bottom 316 margin bottom 316 about 15 is good 315 is fine um, now we want a little padding and padding is different from margin because padding is on the inside so we want this white box to go a little uh, further to the left a little further to the right so 
padding left 10, padding right 10. And it doesn't need to be perfect. So left 10 about, 11's good, and 11. Okay, so now that is looking a lot better. So click on Save and Publish. And then go back. But as we can see that it doesn't go all the way across. And that's because we didn't make this a full width uh, uh, page. So if we click on Edit Page, we did make it full width here, but if we go on, click on the wrench and click on edit row, if we go to layout, we need to make this full width also. Press save and update. And we can view our page. And we can see that the page is starting to look really awesome. The next thing I wanna do is get some text below here. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on edit page. And let's add a new row. So add row. This time we're gonna do three and we're gonna put 70% in the middle and 15 and 15 and press insert. All right, now let's add a visual editor to the middle. Add widget, scroll down, visual editor and press edit. Okay, now let's paste in some text. Make sure you click on the text tab. Go over here, copy this in, and paste it. All right, now we could go back to the visual editor and we can highlight everything and we can center it. So this should be starting to get real easy for you. Then press done. Okay, and press update. And now we can go to Settings and Google Fonts. And we need to remember what this is called. This is called About-Text. So we're going to create a new Google Font. And we're going to name this About-Text. Create Google Font. And put a dot before it, dot About-Text. And I just click Tab to uh, register it. You can click off somewhere. Then press save font control. All right, let's go back to our website and let's go to about. And now we have this text here. It looks okay, but we want it to look amazing. So let's make it look amazing by going to customize. We now have that new Google font control. If we click on typography and theme typography and go to about text. Now we keep on using Roboto, so let's continue with that and click on it. There we go. And let's see the uh, different options. We can scroll down here. And so we have Roboto 122 and 125 and 125. So Roboto 100, text size, font size 22 about. Um, Positioning, margin, 125. There it goes, bottom, 125. All right, so it's nice in the middle right there, and that looks really good. Do we have anything else? Nope. Okay, press Save and Publish. And let's go back. And we can see that the website is looking really good now. The next thing that I want to do is add three boxes here one of my dog, one of me, and one of my wife, Jennifer. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on Edit Page. And let's add a new row, so Add Row. And let's make it 33, 33, 33. Press Insert. Click on the first uh, column and press Add Widget. Then Visual Editor. And go ahead and press Edit. And let's add a spacer in here that is 250 tall, 250 tall. And then let's click on the design and um, instead of background image display, let's do cover and let's, uh, let's actually, before we do that, um, let's save this, the cover, done. And let's duplicate this because they're all gonna be the same. So just click this, click hold and drag to the center, click hold and drag to the right. All right, 
Now we can edit this and let's upload, make sure this is cover, upload uh, Stella first, my dog. All right, so select image, go upload files, select files, and let's go to Stella. All right, that's all done. Press done and done. Okay, let's click edit. Let's upload me by clicking on design. Make sure this is cover, background image, select, upload files, select files. Let's find where I am, Tyler about, Tyler Beach, there it is, open. Press done and done and let's go to edit and design and let's upload my wife Jennifer all right so let's select image and upload files select files and find Jennifer where is she there she is upload all right and pressing done and we added the 250 here because if we just uh, upload a background it's not going to show up because there's no height in it all right, so let's make sure we go to Edit Row, and in and, and under uh, Layout, instead of it being uh, standard, let's or full width. Let's do full width stretch, so it goes all the way across the entire website. And for the gutter, well, let me show you what this looks like first. Save and update. All right, so let's view page. And that is looking pretty darn cool. But what if we don't want to have any space in between here? And this is called the gutter. So what if we want the gutter space to be zero so they're all touching each other? That might look pretty cool. So let's go ahead and press edit page again. And click on the wrench and edit row. And under layout, the gutter, let's do zero. And press save and update. Now when we look at it, it's going to be all the way touching each other, which is really awesome. And of course, we can edit this page and crop it, edit this image so I'm bigger, but I think it looks pretty awesome. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is add in some more text. So let's go over here, and we're going to create the bottom about text. So let's go ahead and edit page, and let's follow the instructions. So instructions are create three columns. 15, 70, and 15. So add row, and this is three, this is 70 in here, 70, enter, 15, 15, and 70, insert. Let's add a new visual editor by clicking add widget, scrolling down, visual editor, and let's click on edit and go to text. All right, and now we're gonna be again copying the class, the about text. So we actually don't need to make a new Google font about this because this one was the same as this about text. So they can be reused as many times as you want. So we're just gonna paste this in and press done and update. Now if we view our page, we're gonna see that we have a beautiful page about us. Oh, but I forgot one thing, I forgot to center this. So let's not celebrate yet. Let's go here, edit, visual, highlight everything, center, done, update, and view page. All right, now it's looking pretty awesome. So that's cool. I live in the mountains of Los Angeles, near the ocean with my wife, Jennifer, and dog, Stella. So that's pretty awesome. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the Our Work page. So go ahead and click on it. And as you probably guessed and can imagine, we're gonna get rid of this Our Work title and make this page full width. So let's go ahead and do that by clicking Edit Page. And what we can do is for the template, go to Full Width Page and Hide Title. And this is because of the Title Remover plugin, once again. All right. Click update and view page. Now we have a beautiful blank canvas and what we're gonna do is we're gonna showcase our work. So we're gonna have some text 
explaining our work, and then an image of our work, and some text explaining our work, and an image of our work. All right, so this is pretty cool to show off all of your work that you've done. So let's go ahead and click on Edit Page. Let's click on Page Builder, and we need to add a row. And let's do three uh, columns, and the middle one's 70, and just press Enter, and these should go to 15, and press Insert. Click on the middle one, and add a widget. And we're going to add the Visual Editor. Then we're going to click on Edit, and make sure we click on Text, and we're going to paste in text. But before we do that, let's actually duplicate this a couple of different times. So let's go here and duplicate and duplicate it again because we're going to have all these boxes of text are going to be the same. All right, so let's click on the first one and click on edit and make sure we're in text. And let's just, uh, this is our span class, our text. So you can put whatever you want in there, but let's copy and paste. Press done. Oh, not yet, actually. Go to visual editor. Click on this a bunch of times so it highlights it all. And press align center. Then done. All right, let's do that again. Edit. Make sure you click on text. Second one, copy. And paste. Visual editor. Select everything. And align center. Done. Click on edit, and let's copy everything, and go down here and paste it, and go to visual and center. I know this can get a little redundant, but that's how you make a website. So press done. And um, now the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, put images under this. So let's just create all of the rows for the images. So add row, and it's going to be 100% across, and we're going to insert. And this row, if we go to edit, is going to be uh, in layout, is going to be full width. So the image goes all the way across. And press save. All right, now we can duplicate this. So let's duplicate the entire row, and let's duplicate it again. All right, so now we have three different rows. Now let's add in the visual editor. So let's click on here and add a widget. And let's add visual editor. All right, so let's add space to it. So let's add a spacer. And that's 400 tall. And we're adding this because if we didn't, then the uh, there wouldn't be any height in, in it. And we can duplicate it, and we can drag it actually to a different column, which is pretty cool. There we go. Duplicate it again. Drag it to a different column. And there we go. All right, now we need to uh, put in different images in back of uh, each of these. So we can click on the Edit Row Wrench and click on Design and select the background image. The first image that we're going to do, if we upload files and select files, is the jellyfish image. So jellyfish, jellyfishes, jellyfish eye, jellyfish. All right, and press done and cover, then press save. All right, and the second image that we're gonna do is an image of people on a cliff. So edit row, design, make sure it's cover, uh, background image, select, Upload files, and let's do cliff. All right. And done. And again, make sure this is on full width layout. All right, press save. And then the third image, if we click on the wrench and edit row and click on design, is going to be, make sure it's cover. Select image is going to be a night sky. All right, so let's find that night sky right in front of me. All right, and we can press done and save. All right, but we don't want all the text to be up here and all the images down here. We want text image, text image, text image. So we do that by just click and holding and dragging it right under. So click and hold and drag it 
right under, and this one's already right under. All right, so now we have text image, text image, text image. Okay, now let's press update. And it's always a good idea to check your work. So let's view our page. And you can see that it looks pretty good, but the text is not that great. So let's go ahead and create a Google font by going to the dashboard and going to settings and Google fonts. Create a new Google font. This one's called about text, I believe, about text. Let's double check that. Uh, no, it's called our text. So I'm glad I checked that. Okay, our text. Okay, and then create font control. And let's name this dot our text. So if we go up here, dot our dash text. Our dash text. All right, and then press save font control. All right, now that we have that done, we can go and visit our site to our work. And let's go ahead and to the customizer and go to typography, theme typography, and now we have this new our text right here. All right, click on it, and again, we're going to be using Roboto. So just type, start typing in it. And let's see all the settings. So Roboto 100, this is the color. So appearance, font color, paste it in there. Control V if you're on a PC, Command V if you're on a Mac. And let's see, font size 28. Doo -doo -doo. Pretty cool. And letter spacing two. Letter spacing two pixels, all right. And margin top 111, margin bottom. 111. So under position, margin top 111 ish, margin bottom 111. Also, oh, oh, there it goes. All right, press save and publish. And now it changes all of them, of course, because they're all named our dash text. All right, press save, exit it, and look at that. You have a beautiful page displaying all of your work in a really cool way. Now that's pretty awesome. The next page that we're going to do is the services page. So go ahead and click on services and we know what to do. We're going to get rid of this title right here and we're going to make this page full width. So go ahead and press edit page and let's go to template and full width page and let's hide the title. All right. And press update and press view page. All right, now we have a blank canvas and what we wanna do here is we want to add text to this side and an image to this side and then an image to this side and text to this side. You'll see this a lot on websites like apple.com and it looks really cool. All right, so let's do it. So let's edit page and let's go to the page builder and let's add row. 50-50 is great. So we're going to insert. Then we're going to add widgets to it. So let's add widget to the visual editor and we're going to duplicate it and just drag it over. All right, now we're going to duplicate this for a total of five. So we're going to duplicate row. Again, that's three, four, and five. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add text here and an image here and an image here and text here so and so on so let's edit and let's go and paste in the text that we need to all right so this is the text and make sure you click on text and paste it in and as we can see it's easier to see over here that it just goes to uh, the headline is relax for this one and then it just has regular text underneath. Okay, so let's do that for the second one. And these don't need to be centered or anything like that. All right, so we're done with that. And so let's do it on this one. 
Make sure you click on text, paste it in, and press done. Click on edit for the third one, and we're doing the opposite sides. This one's called reflect. And make sure you're on text, and paste it in. All right, press done. So these are all alternating. Now we can do the fourth one and copy text paste done and now for the fifth one you can edit this and we can copy it for the last schedule a visit call to action all right paste it and for this one we are going to add in uh, some space so for the for that one, we're going to add in 20 pixels of space to the bottom. So we're going to go back to visual and add, just enter and add 20 pixels of space, just so it's not right up against the bottom. All right. Um, and we're going to make it enter right there. So it goes on a new line. And we're going to make sure all of those are entered so that it goes on to a new line. So. Make sure you can do that. So reflect, enter, done, and edit this one, enter, done, and make sure they're all like that. Enjoy, enter, done. All right, so once they're all like that, then we can add in our button. So we want a button on this side. So we're going to press edit and we're going to copy in some button code. So we're going to go like this. This is the button code and we're going to add in uh, 40 pixels first. So just add this so that the button's not all the way at the top. And then we're going to go to text and after this we're going to add in the, whoops, paste it there we're going to add in the button code. And what we're going to do for the buttons is we're going to align them right. So just go back to visual and highlight it and go align right. It doesn't matter if this is right also. That's fine. Okay, so once we do that, um, we're going to press done. And now we're going to add in our images. So go ahead and click on this, edit. And let's add in a 20 uh, pixel spacer. And let's add in our images. So the first one was reflect, I believe. Let's see. Uh, the first one was relax. Relax, okay. So we're gonna upload files, select files. And again, you could get these from unsplash.com or download the folder that I uh, provided you. All right, and it's gonna link to nothing. So when we click on the image, we don't want it to link to anything and we want it to be full size. So we'll insert that into page and we'll press done. All right, and we'll keep on doing that. So we'll edit this one. We'll add in a 20 pixel spacer, press enter, add media. And the next one was begin, I believe. All right, and make sure it doesn't link to anywhere and it's full size and insert into page. Okay, done. So relax, begin, reflect, and then enjoy. Okay, so let's edit this one and let's add spacer, enter, add media, upload files, reflect, reflect, there it is. Make sure it links to nowhere, insert into page, and done and finally enjoy. So we're gonna go here and add media, upload files, find the enjoy. There it is, open and insert into page. All right, done. And this is for our services. Obviously you can make your services however you want and just describe your services in a really cool way. All right, so let's press update and let's check our work, make sure we didn't do anything crazy. So view our page. 
and we can see that it is looking pretty good, but the uh, text obviously isn't properly aligned. So we want it to be properly aligned. All right, and this one seems a little different. So we're gonna see, we're gonna need to uh, see what we did differently with this one. Maybe we didn't add in a spacer to this one. So for enjoy, we're gonna see that we did something different. And yeah, we didn't add in the spacer to the top of this. So if you do that, just press enter and add in a spacer. All right, so now they should all be the same, but what we need to do is we need to, um, it doesn't look right if we go back to the page because it's hard to distinguish between from one uh, section, which this is a section, from the other. So what I wanna do is I wanna make it really light in the background and uh, change the color just a little bit. It gives it a really cool effect and it's easier on people's eyes. So what we're going to do is we're going to press edit and for the first row we're going to keep white but for the second one we're going to add in this color. So go ahead and press edit row and make sure your layout is full width and under design, under background color, let's add in a color. Alright, so that's pretty good and press save. All right, so that was this one. Now let's do it on every other one. So let's do it on this one too. So edit row and under layout, go full width. And under design, let's, uh, and background color, let's paste that in there and press save. All right, and update. And now when we look at our website, it's gonna be a lot cleaner and a lot easier. We're gonna know when one section uh, stops and one section starts and this may seem like a really light color but it really helps people all right now let's uh make it so that we can uh edit the fonts so that's pretty easy let's go to our dashboard and go to settings and google fonts and if we re remember what this is called it's called services headline so we're going to create a new Google font and it's going to be called services headline. All right, create Google font and we're going to add in dot services dash headline. Okay, services dash headline, that's correct. And we're going to press save font control. Once we do that, we can go back to our website and go to services and now let's edit these services and again for some reason this relax uh, didn't go on a new line so we can edit it and click here and put a space right in there press done and update okay let's view our page again and there you go that's much better all right, so now let's go ahead and customize. Then click on typography and theme typography and find our services headline. All right, so this is going to be Roboto again. You don't want to have too many fonts on your website because they'll look crazy. Um, and then let's see, Roboto 100. This is the color, Roboto 100, font color, this, and font size 42, font size 42, and uh, margin top 18, so margin top 18, or whatever looks even with this right here. That looks pretty good. Schedule a visit. All right. And then press save and publish and go back. And this looks really, really awesome. That looks really cool. And obviously you can change the links to go wherever you want by clicking edit and just changing the links. It's very easy. 
So that is really, really awesome. Now let's do the contact page. And we know what to do. We're gonna have to get rid of this title and make this a full width page. So let's edit page and make the template full width and let's hide title. Then press update and let's view our page. Now we have a beautiful blank canvas to start as. And what we wanna do is we wanna add a map right here that goes all the way across. And then we wanna add a contact form right here and some uh, contact details and a picture. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Click on edit page and let's go to page builder. And sorry, that shouldn't be there. And let's uh, press add row add row and let's make this row go 100% across and press insert and now let's add a widget so click on this and add widget but instead of adding the visual editor like we usually do we're going to add the site origins google maps and this is available because we downloaded the site origins widget bundle so make sure you've downloaded that plugin um, so click on this and press edit for map center, you can do your exact address, but I'm just gonna do Malibu, California. For the height, I'm just gonna put 200 because I don't want it to be that big. And I'm gonna uncheck scroll to zoom because if you're scrolling on a page and you roll over the map, then I'll start zooming, but I don't want it to do that. So we can press done, but we're not done yet. We need to actually edit this row and go to design, I mean layout and make sure it is the full width stretched layout. So it goes all the way across. Then press save and press update. Now we wanna check our work to make sure we're not doing something crazy. So view our page and we can see that that looks really cool and it's interactive and you can zoom or do whatever you want and it's really cool. And if you scroll right here, it's not gonna start zooming and doing crazy things. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now let's add in some text to this website. So let's go to edit page again. And let's add a row and let's make this one 70% and the other one 30% and press insert. All right, now let's add a visual editor to this. So click on it and add widget and go to visual editor. And let's actually duplicate it three times for a total of three times and let's drag one over here okay now what we want to do is we want to add in some text so go to edit and we can just type in some text here our contact details i have some text that i want to use there it is so i'm just going to bold these different ones bold bold and Bold. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to hold shift enter or just enter, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to add in a horizontal line. There we go. That's pretty cool. And then I'm going to press done because we're all done with that. Next, I'm going to add in a, a background image here. So I'm going to add in a spacer and this is going to be 380 pixels tall. So I'm going to press done and I'm gonna edit this and I'm going to go to design and select the background image. So select image, upload files, select files. Then I'm gonna go to skateboard and open. After I do that, I'm gonna press done. Okay, that's fine. And make sure this is cover and press done. Okay. So um, the last thing that we need to do is we need to put it in a contact form here. So we're just gonna press update because we need to leave the page. And we are going to go to uh, contact. And this is because, this is here because we downloaded the contact form seven plugin. So make sure you have that plugin. We did it at the beginning of uh, this tutorial. So if you've been following along step-by-step, step, you already have it here. All right, so click on it. And what we have to do is we have to copy this code right here and paste it in. But before we do that, we can uh, click on this and make sure 
and you can make the form however you want right here but make sure that your email address is right here in the two all right so we could just go back to contact and copy this short code it's called it inserts the form into your website all right and then go back to pages and home I mean sorry contact and under here go to edit and just paste it in there we go all right press done and press update now if we look at our page we're gonna see that we have a beautiful contact page right here and it looks great and you can fill it all out right here and send your message and it's really cool so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change these buttons up here. You can make them regular buttons, but we're going to put a video in it. So when you click on it, it pops up into a really cool box and it could be like your company video. Okay. So what we need to do first is we need to go to the dashboard and under appearance, click on light box plus color box. And this is because we downloaded the plugin. That's why it's here. So if you haven't downloaded the plugin light box plus color box, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and click on it and we need to scroll down and use secondary light box. Make sure that's checked off and press save all settings. Once we do that, we can press OK and we should, if we go down here, see not this box, but the second box down here. So this is the secondary light box settings that's going to control our uh, pop-up video. All right, so we have some settings to uh, do. So it's elastic 305%, elastic 305%. This overlay opacity is how dark the website gets when you um, click on the button. So I don't want it to get dark at all, hardly. So I'm just gonna put 5%. If you wanted to dim the background, then you can do 80, 90, 100%, something like that. All right, so I'm gonna do that. And then under size, I'm gonna give it a width and height. So 80% and percent and 80%. This is 80% of how big the page is or tall the page is. And maximum width and height, we could keep it 90%. That's fine. And then we're gonna name um, under other the secondary class name. This is kind of weird to say uh, or weird to type so we're just gonna type in pop-up so pop-up will be what we have to add to our code and you'll see it all that so we're gonna press save all settings press OK and then we're gonna go back to our website and we are going to go to customize and under header options we can go to right header right block content and under but buttons we can you know easily change this if we change this right here it'll change up here so I can put like hello or change this one either way and uh, right here is what it links to so if we wanted the hello to link to the services page we would just do um, slash services in between the quotes so it's really easy all right but we have code to copy so this is code and i'll explain it in a second and we could just copy it and paste it all right so now we have watched the video in our work and if we notice that this class is equal to pop-up and that's because uh that's what we needed for the video to pop up so we're gonna press save and publish. And what we can do is we can watch the video. Click on it and it pops up beautifully. And we can play it. And it's just really awesome. We can stop it and click off of it to make it go away. And we can go to the Our Work page up here and to make sure it all works. What we also can do is if we go back to our dashboard and go to Appearance and Lightbox plus Colorbox, we can go down here and we can 
uh, change different things in here so we can change how what it looks like and just like the different options we could change anything in here okay and you can also change the different settings up here so like what it looks like and the style of it so if we wanted to go to styles and we wanted the light style instead of the uh, dark one we can click on lightweight and we can save all settings and then we can go back to our website and we can see that if we refresh and click on it that it is a different style and it looks really cool so that is the video and that is awesome if you want to change the video which I imagine you would you can just go to youtube.com and type in the video you want to put in instead let's see this one's pretty cool and all you need is this right here so we can just copy this and we can go back to the website and go to customize and uh, click on header options header right block content and just change this after it goes slash embed slash right here paste that in press save and publish and go back now we can stop this and we can check it out press watch the video and it will change to this really cool video pretty cool huh Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is get some social media icons at the bottom of our website. Okay, so to do that, we can close this tab and we can go over to uh, roll over your name or your business name and go to customize. And then go to social right here and you'll see all of these different uh, social media networks. So what we can do is if we go to the Facebook one, we can enter in our Facebook URL and we can select an image. I don't have a Facebook image right now, so we can go to logomaker.com. That's L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R without an E uh, .com and we can just search for Facebook. We can find the proper Facebook and just click on it whatever one we want we can get circle icons or whatever we want and I'm just gonna make it white here and you can't see it right now you could if you right click and press black background but it doesn't really matter and it doesn't really matter what size it is as long as it's pretty big press save and make sure to uh, copy your credits to your credits page so just copy and paste it um, alright so just save it to your desktop and do the same thing for all of your social media sites. So I'm gonna do YouTube also and find something that looks similar so it seems consistent. Um, this one looks pretty similar. And I'm going to make it white and press save this one. And of course, copy the credits to my credits page, but you know how to do that. And then I'm just gonna do LinkedIn also. All right, and that looks similar. Maybe this one. Whoops, I didn't down delete YouTube. <laughs> delete. All right, uh, LinkedIn, press save. All right, now that I've saved all of them to my desktop, I can now uh, just upload them here. So I can select image and upload files, select files, and find the one that um, was for Facebook and there it is Facebook press open and choose image alright so that's done now let's go to LinkedIn and just type in our LinkedIn URL and select image upload files LinkedIn where is it there it is open choose and we're done with that and uh, YouTube 
So YouTube URL is that. Select image, upload files, you get the point. YouTube, there it is. Okay. Done data. So once we do that, we want to click save and publish. But if we notice that it's not down here yet, and that's because we need to set it there. So we need to go to footer options, uh, footer content, and instead of logo, let's do our social icons. And as we can see, we have those social icons, each linking to the social network. Press save and publish. And there we have it, some really cool social icons. You can make any color you want, use any icons you want. That's pretty awesome. The next thing that we're gonna do is solve a problem you didn't even know you had. So we can close Logo Maker right here. And if we notice when we resize this, as an example, if it's on like your cell phone or something, then you can see that this doesn't show all of Explore. And it's just too big and it goes and it goes off the screen. So how do we solve this problem? And it took me a couple of days to solve it, but I did. Uh, to find a really easy solution. So uh, you want to go to edit page and edit. And where you have your span, class, home headline, explore, you can just add another one called headline dash resize. Headline resize. Or you can just copy it here. Headline resize. And then press done and update. And what that does is it makes it so that it can't uh, go, it can't do that. So if we look at it now, that's pretty cool. It resizes perfectly. So that is pretty awesome. And you can solve, uh, you could do that on any headline. So I have one last really cool thing to show you that's really gonna set you apart from everyone else. And I wanna show it to you on my own website. So if we go to tyler.com, we can see that there's a nice image here, but what if you're on your mobile phone and the screen is smaller? So it's like this. Then as you can see on a mobile device, I wouldn't be there, I would disappear. And that's because the focus is on the top left and it cuts out everything else. What if I want the focus to be on the top right so that I'm still in the frame? So the way we can do that is we can edit page and click on the row, edit row, and click on attributes. Okay, so and then we can just uh, copy this CSS right here. Copy it and we can paste it in here and I'll explain it. So if we pretend like this box is the page, 100, 0 would be, X would be 100. So it starts in the left top left corner at 0, 0. X being 100 would be way over here, and Y being 0 would be right here. So if we wanted to the bottom right corner, then it would be 100X, 100Y. If we wanted it to be right in the center, it would be 50X and 50Y. But right now it's 100x and 0y, so it's going to focus in the top right corner if this was the page. So let's press save and let's press update. So let's see what that looks like. So now when we resize it, it's always going to focus on me because it's cropping from this top right corner. So it's cropping from 100x and 0y, so right there. So that's pretty awesome. Now I wanna leave you with a couple of tips before we finish this video. The first tip is how to update this theme because I'm always gonna be adding new features to it and taking in your suggestions. So how do you update this theme? Well, if we go into the dashboard and go to appearance and themes, what we have to do is we have to activate another theme. So you'd click activate and then activate the theme and then once you do that on uh, the Tesseract theme, you would if this was a Tesseract theme, you would click on it and you'd press delete. So you delete the theme. And then what you would do is you would add new and you would re-upload the theme. So you have to delete the theme and then re-upload it. You want to make sure that uh, that you save your navigation buttons and colors and uh, 
logo and everything like that. It'll save your logo automatically, but just the, the buttons and the colors because it's going to delete that. So when you update the theme, it's gonna delete your buttons. So that's the first tip. My next tip is how to make really cool looking websites. So I think you should get inspiration from really great businesses, not crappy businesses like internet marketing businesses or you know even your local business websites. You should go to a website like apple.com and see how they make their uh, how they make it look so good. And you can do all of this. You can put in a background image and some text and uh, add a new row and then make three different columns, one right here, one right here, one right here. Add some Google font controls. I mean, you can do all of this. They The layout's not hard. It's not technically hard. It's just how to make it look good. So that's really easy. And I have all of uh, the websites that I really like right here. So I like Airbnb and and Apple and MailChimp and Skype and they all look really good. Let's go to Skype. And this is all easy. You have text right here, an image in the background, a download button in the center, some icons, and then a new uh, row which is divided in half. So one right here and one right here with uh, just icons and then a Google font control and buttons and you can do all of this and just get inspiration for your website and just make sure to create something that you're really really proud of and something that inspires you so we're gonna close that and that's gonna be the end of that tip make some amazing websites my last tip is to always do good in the world when you help people out your business does better than you can even imagine so just help people out and if you need help then you can go over to my website, tyler.com, onto this blog post, and you can comment and say, hey, I don't understand this, or this step was wrong, or um, whatever it is. I notice a lot of people are afraid for some reason, um, and they think that they can't do this when they totally can, and I'm here to tell you that, yes, you can. You can do this. Um, so I just ask that if you get help and you start to learn and understand, join the community and help someone else out. So just uh, pay it forward. So congratulations. Um, I'm so grateful that you chose to watch this video. I know it was a long video. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. And thank you so much.